Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Hey, we're back and we are picking up where we left off yesterday. We are talking about 12 with a bonus uh, 13 points on how you can start an award-winning um, you know, great podcast. And we went over a lot of the great uh, founding foundation points yesterday. So if you've not heard how to actually get it out of the ground, how to actually, you know, think of your name and conceptualize about how you want your podcast to look and feel, please go back and listen to part one, which was yesterday. So we're going to pick up where we left off um, yesterday today with point number six. But before we do, um, we did have some interesting questions that came in as a result of yesterday's show with regards to basically making a living off doing podcasting. I thought that was kind of an interesting concept. Mm-hmm. People were trying to sort of figure out whether or not Julie and I are sort of living off, uh, you know, the proceeds from a podcast. No, no. <laughs> is the answer. Like publishing a book, like doing a lot of massive syndication things, you have to have an ulterior motive aside from, you know, frankly, it's a nice hobby. And we like doing it. You know, there's those two things. But our uh, goal with the podcast, and we're going to talk about what your goal should be too, is to monetize it in indirect ways. And that's going to be maybe selling coaching products or letting people know about eXp Realty or promoting our book. But most things that you think make you a lot of money, even when they're really successful, actually don't. What they are essentially are, to use you know traditional marketing terms, lost leaders for other things. Now, again, you don't have to do a podcast with any intent whatsoever of monetizing it, and that's great too. Um, because if you get another, like for example, Julie and I listen to like History on Fire, and we listen to some of these other history, uh, long form, uh, uh, essentially these incredible geniuses about world history talk about what really happened. And they're giving uh, all these different um, perspectives that we certainly never learned in school. Those are That format of podcasting is probably one of Julie and I's favorite. They never have ads on there uh, of them actually trying to sell something. There's no, they're not selling t-shirts or coffee mugs or coaching programs or anything like that. They might have a book though. Well, they might have a book like Carlin, for example, but he, he doesn't, he actually hasn't published a book yet as far as I know. But what he does do is he has sponsors for his podcast. Mm -hmm. So he'll choose three sponsors and they'll run commercials during his podcast. So if his podcast gets say a hundred thousand downloads, which I think that actually gets more than that um, for every time he does it, he doesn't do it that frequently because his Mm -hmm. podcasts are epic. Yes. They're Um, very long. But then if he has somebody that, you know, this running some sort of a, you know, commercial or whatnot, they might pay him two or three thousand dollars just to have exposure on his podcast to his audience but it's not two or three million i think is the oh point no that it's not making. two or three million people are not making gajillions off of that type of stuff no they're not and that's something again so a lot of you were asking us questions about that um and no for us it's just essentially you know like i said it's in it's a hobby it's something we enjoy doing it's a way for us to stay in contact with all of you it's become somewhat habitual mm-hmm. and it does reinforce the other things that julie and i do professionally so just keep that in mind so point number six and this is where we left off yesterday how to get downloads and that starts with one of the most important questions is which itunes category should you choose that's right so choose the category with the least competition big categories like business are too hard to rank in does ranking really matter well not really but you need to market your show when you're starting market via direct mail market via being on other people's podcasts as a guest that's the best way by the way definitely and market on your own social media it's unknown how iTunes actually decides its list placement, so don't make yourself crazy with that. It is believed that they track the number of new subscribers you had in the past reporting period. We've had as high as 20 we have been as high as 23 globally in education, but are usually in the top 300. We still have up to 55,000 downloads every day. So the bottom line is don't really worry so much about your lists as long as you're reaching your people. Well, so let's put let's frame this out. So we've had this podcast has been downloaded over 20 million times, not this per show in particular, but the accumulation of all of them. And there's podcasts that have been listened to, like Joe Rogan, I use him as an example. His podcast, when he comes out with it, on day one, it's downloaded like a million times. And he does four to five podcasts a week. I mean, think about- his podcasts are like two or three hours sometimes. Yeah, exactly. They're very, very long. I mean, that's, you know, that's a whole different thing. (laughs) But that's really an itch, but that's a good example, Mm -hmm. going back to our previous point number five with regards to format. Mm -hmm. He does these long form interviews 
And the reason he does it is because everyone has talking points. He interviews a lot of famous people and they're always going to show up, sit in his chair, and they're then going to basically go through their normal talking points. I mean, you and I have talking points, sure. right? Everybody does. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you get off those talking points, and that's the reason he runs a podcast so long, then you start actually getting to know the person. So if you really want to know what Joe mm -hmm. Rogan's his podcast is about, always skip forward. Well, yeah. we never do. We listen to the whole thing, but you can just skip forward and listen to the second half. It's like he works through their typical content and then drills down. Yeah. And sometimes he might get them a little drunk and high like he did with Elon Musk. Yeah, we don't do that on our podcast. No, we don't. But, do but that was an interesting podcast, though. As Julie's yeah. having a nice long drink of her tea. Yes, just cream tea, though, <laughs> with honey. That's right. Yes. Well, so let's let's talk about this downloads thing. And this is something you guys uh, you should Google this if you care. But what's really fascinating is there is no way to game. Um, and I've always been curious about this. Is there's no way to game where you place on the iTunes category because iTunes, which is the Granddaddy, grandma, king and queen of all things podcasts. They sort of they basically created the space. And a lot of people are coming to the market now trying to compete with uh, iTunes, but probably never will. So iTunes has never told or never disclosed how they go about deciding who's number one and who's number two. And it's not the number of downloads, which is really fascinating. Because if it were the number of downloads, when Julie and I have 55,000 downloads in a day, we'd be like top 10, but it's not. Sometimes it's uh, downloads. People believe it's a and, – and every single day it changes. So the ranking changes every day. And so it might be – the it might be. Listen to what I'm saying. It might be the number of downloads. It might be the number of new subscribers. It might be the number of five-star reviews you had in the uh, previous week, in the previous reporting period. Or it not, might just be some sort of you know hamster wheel that happens to land on the right number for you that particular Random. day. I mean, nobody knows. Mm -hmm. So the, the moral of the story is don't worry about it because – you're not going to get a lot of traffic dressed from iTunes. iTunes won't necessarily send you traffic. What they will do is when they see you have a lot of podcasts that are around a specific topic, then you're, you know, for example, real estate coaching radio. Again, if someone goes to iTunes, they put in real estate coaching, they're going to find our podcast. And that's because we've done, you know, thousands of shows. We've had a lot of five star reviews, a few one star reviews, especially when Julie goes off on one of her political rants. That's yeah, right. <laughs> That's a joke, right? And But, yeah. you know, overall, the accumulation of, of our consistent effort has made it so iTunes will say, you know what, if you're interested in this podcast about how to list homes, you're probably also going to be list, uh, interested in real estate coaching radio. You're going to have to market your own podcast when you're bringing it to market. And frankly, all the time after that. And I'll give you, here's what Julie and I do. Most of our marketing is done for free just because all the different syndicators or all the different podcasting platforms of which there's like dozens of them, iTunes being the big one. Uh, and again, we're going to get to media syndication in a second. It's the next point. But what they'll do is they'll essentially, if we're on, for example, Stitcher, which is just for Android devices, right? They'll uh, Stitcher doesn't have necessarily a lot of people that are competing for the same keywords or the same topics that we are. So Julie and I will almost always place higher in Stitcher than we would say, for example, on iTunes. Again, all of this stuff is uh, nothing other than glorified mental masturbation that you're never going to decipher. It's too confusing. So what really does matter is when you start, you're going to have to market your own show. One of the best ways to market your own show is get on other people's podcasts. We get every single day probably at least five, sometimes as many as 20 people that are companies, marketing companies that are asking us to put their customer, their client, um, a PR agency on our podcast. And by the way, I always read those. No one, no, no one filters those. And I almost always say no because almost all of them are coming to uh, wanting to be on our podcast because they're trying to s get access to our audience to sell them something. That's not what our podcast is all about. Our podcast is all about delivering actionable information that's going to put you in a position to help people and make money. It's not when you don't want to show up and listen to somebody, you know, drawing on about whatever their latest investor widget is, right? And that's what most of these you know, pitches to us are. We are always interested in knowing if someone wants to be on our podcast, maybe they have a good story to tell. But it's not, again, it's going to be something infrequently that we do. But there is a place on our podcast page, which is on timandjulieharris.com, where you can submit your request to be on our podcast. And like I said, I personally review all those, and so does Julie. I review them first, then Julie approves them. That's how we work. All right, point number seven, media syndication. So this is the name of the game. You should have your show appear on all the top podcast services and, of course, YouTube. We use audio bursts for YouTube content. What's an audio burst, Tim? Okay, good. So what happens is we do our podcast. The process is point number eight, which we'll get to. So we do the podcast. Julie and I record our podcast. We use Ferrite. We could also use Podbean. All those are our apps. 
So right now I'm clicking on my iPhone, making sure it's recording. It's recording into the Ferrite app. app. After it's been recorded, then what's going to happen is I'm going to then uh, go send that via Google. I'm going to load it to Google Drive to our assistant who is in the Philippines. And then she's then going to uh, load it to a uh, Podbean and Podbean's going to syndicate it. She's also going to send it to our professional seed syndicator, our publisher, which is C-Suite. You don't need a publisher. We have a publisher because we have a lot of listens and we have advertisers that are wanting to take out ads on the, on the, um, obviously on this podcast. And, uh, we didn't want to have to bother with selling the ads ourselves. So a publisher came to us and they're splitting whatever the ad revenue is. And so that's the reason you have our publisher. When you don't, when you start, you will not have a publisher. You might be able to get an affiliate relationship with some company where you're going to say, you know, give the commercial and then you're going to ask them to go to some website and use your affiliate code. You could start by doing that. But over time, what's going to happen is people will come to you when they see that you have a consistent audience and when they realize, you know, essentially that you have um, a viable market for them to sell their whatever product to. And you can, you know, approve or decline whatever it is that they're trying to sell. You know, we get requests for people to want to advertise all kinds of strange things to you guys that we say no to. I mean, some of them are really quite hilarious. And Julie's the one that shoots me down. I mean, I'm I would like, love. I'm not reading that. <laughs> Julie reads all of our commercials, as you guys know. No. And Blue Chew wants to be a no. sponsor of our Let's podcast. <laughs> Blue Chew is basically chewable Viagra. Yeah. And I would love, nothing would be funnier to me and many of you if we got Blue Chew to be a sponsor and Julie read the commercial. Not that would happen. be hilarious. No. <laughs> but she won't but do it. But you do get to choose. So yeah, you could. There you are. Yeah, anyway. Okay. <laughs> So before it degrades further, yes. um, some of you guys have also asked about Stitcher, which does oh, you know go what? to I didn't Androids. Answer, I didn't answer yeah. your question. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So she asked me about what Audio Burst is. Yeah. So what Audio Burst is basically, you guys can go at audioburst.com. I think they're out of the UK. Is they will take your podcast and you, um, they'll download it from uh, iTunes automatically. You don't have to do anything. And then they make a very short video about your uh, podcast and they put it up on YouTube and they could also send it to all the social sites as well. If you guys go to, you guys will find these, it's a, uh, it's our cover art. And then there's this little player thing that's, you know, showing the word and sometimes the words are appearing on. It's the like a mini promotion. Isn't right. It? And it gets pushed to our Instagram. So check it out. And you definitely want to be using it because it's super cheap. And the process in their system is fantastic. It's automated, basically, right? Totally. Yeah. We don't have to do anything. And so that's like you're essentially delegating somebody making some really cool screen art. And then it gets pushed to all the socials. If you guys want to see it, just go to our Instagram page, which is Tim and Julie Harris. Is that even page? No, go to our Instagram and it's <laughs> yeah. Tim and Julie Harris. And you can see what the pod, what the, I'm sorry, the audio burst looks like. And you definitely want to do that when you're doing your podcast. Again, your goal, your only goal is to do the audio, do the, do a good podcast, deliver really good quality. Quality, make it so that every single show is a little bit better. You'll find audience. The audience will find you. You're going to need to do some marketing to get the word out about your podcast. Just like if, for example, you just think about it. Where do you go? You want to stay when you're bringing something to market. You want to stay small at first, and then you want to go wider as it makes sense. Small is going to be the people like, say, for example, if you're starting a real estate podcast about your local community, well, it makes sense. You're going to have your local community on the podcast. So why don't you go if there's like a neighbor, uh, there's always going to be people in every community, which are the leaders in a community. It might be the local publisher of a newspaper, might be the head of the PTA and might be, you know, whatever it is, all the, the people on your school board, if you want to, you know, get into politics, which we wouldn't. And you want to get those people on your podcast because what they're then going to do is Talk about the fact that they're on your podcast and they're going to expose your podcast to the people that are their friends and followers and, you know, what have you. And that's how you can start picking up audience. You're sort of pigeon tailing on other people's um, credibility, in essence, and well, you're going to build your podcast that yeah, way. And you're building your center of influence that way, too. Totally. Which is, you know, something that everybody who is in real estate needs to be doing all the time. Well, there's a guy here in uh, Puerto Rico. His name is Richard Santana. He's a mm -hmm. real estate broker and he has done a fantastic yes. job of pos positioning himself as a thought leader around uh, business and uh, Puerto Rican uh, mm -hmm. business development and economic development. Very broad, yeah. And he does these uh, live events and he does a podcast where he'll interview these leaders. And a lot of these people are like, you know, some of them are incredibly influential, not just in Puerto Rico, but in business in general, in the Caribbean mm -hmm. and, and just around the world. And they all want to be on his podcast mm -hmm. because it's, you know, free PR. Everyone sure. likes, everyone likes to have attention. And so 
getting when you invite people to be on your podcast, very rarely are they going to say no. But you got to make it so that when they go to your podcast, like you don't need a fancy website. We're going to talk about that in a second. You just need uh, you need to make sure your iTunes page looks good and, and maybe have an, uh, a, a, a Facebook work. I'm sorry, a Facebook business page around your podcast. And that's really all you need to do. So. Here we go. Media syndication. Did we just read that point? We just did yeah, that we one. did. And process, okay. you mostly just talked about that, how we actually get the show up and running. We send it off to Karen. Um, I mentioned Stitcher before. Sometimes people ask about that. Yep. Ninety-five uh, percent of your downloads are going to be from iTunes. Stitcher does yep. go to Androids, though, so that's one to maybe include. Yeah. So iTunes doesn't work on Android phones. So you know, the real takeaway is don't have an Android. Get an iPhone. But yes. for those of you who are not yet ready to, you know, be in the 21st century, I joke. I joke. <laughs> uh, so I think that we're on to number nine there. Well, again, so um, we didn't see it, uh, da, 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 uh, how the image appears. So when we're – go look at um, how we have our uh, podcast appear in our main website, uh, timandjulieharris.com, and click on podcasts, uh, and then you'll see how we uh, show – now, you don't need to do what we do. You don't need to have a standalone website. You don't need to go to that effort. Because really, at the end of the day, what's going to get listed and indexed inside Google will be iTunes, will be Stitcher, will be Spotify. Which, by the way, you're gonna you have to apply to get onto some of these platforms. Spotify being one of them. When you first start, they're gonna reject you. Don't worry about it. Just go back and reapply when you have more listeners. Now, if you've been doing the show for a long period of time, and remember the point we made yesterday about don't uh, leave bread. Uh, breadcrumbs of you being a quitter. And what that meant specifically was, is if you start doing a podcast and you stop doing a podcast, you've now basically told the world that you you have lack of, you have commitment issues. Um, so they're going to yep. see you start something, you didn't finish it. Don't be that guy or gal. So when you start, make a commitment to keep on doing it. And as far as how long each podcast needs to be, some cat, like our friend Brendan Pritchard, his podcast is 15 minutes. We have other Joe Rogan, his podcast is three hours. Julie and I keep ours to 30 minutes to 45 minutes because that's where, you know, that's how long it want, we want it yep. to be. But also we know most people are not, how do people listen to podcasts? Like they li used to listen to radio. They're going to listen to it. And I know this isn't necessarily applicable because of COVID, but they're going to listen to it as they drive to work or they're going to listen to it as they drive home or they're going to listen to it as they drive to work and as they drive home. Depending during on how lunch, during a workout, right. most of these things are 30 minute experiences, right? So let's see, your look, your show, this is point number nine. Point number nine. Your yep. show needs to have a bright, eye-catching bit of artwork. You can look at ours. You go to, go to Real Estate Coaching Radio on iTunes. You can see what our art looks like. I don't know about you, Tim, but you've, I, I remember scrolling through different things. I'm trying different podcasts out. And occasionally it'll be like, really? That's the picture you chose? That's a little creepy. Well, it's, so, it's your, it doesn't it, matter. It's basically a favicon. So it's like a little, when you guys go to iTunes, Put in Real Estate Coaching Radio and you'll see the artwork that we're talking about. We tested different images. We know what worked. We knew, we tested the colors. We, you know, we wanted to balance it out. Like, for example, we know exactly 50% of our listeners are female and obviously 50% are male. So, well, maybe not so obvious nowadays, but you guys mm -hmm. get the gist of it, right? So we wanted to make the colors and we wanted to make the imagery so it would appeal to everybody versus having something that looked more formal and more business-like. Like overly corporate or something exactly. like that that really didn't match our style. Right. And because a lot of real estate anymore is about relationships and, and the way we do our podcast mm -hmm. is, you know, it's our it's predicated on our sure. relationship professionally and personally. That's right. And the cover art represents that. Well, but if you were doing, say, New Albany Real Estate podcast, you might have a picket fence in your backyard or, sure. or you might in the background, you might have, you know, a sample architectural of something that makes sense for what your theme is. Right. So if you sell in a beach community, maybe you've got the ocean in your background. Make it appropriate to what you're doing. I would do. I honestly, if uh, to Julie's point, if you're going to, you know, I would always have an image of myself. You always want sure. your face on it because that's what people are going to identify with. If you go to a magazine rack and you're looking at all the different magazines, all the way from the women's fashion magazines to the teen magazines to the hunting magazines, car magazines, the ones that catch your eye are always going to be the ones with people's faces on them. Mm -hmm. And that's inc and it's incredibly important that you understand that. If you want to learn, understand what other people's behaviors are, just look at your own behaviors and assume that most people are just like you because they are. So always have a picture of you on the front of it and have something that's going to catch their attention. Colors matter because people are going to scroll things mm -hmm. through things relatively quick. All right. Uh, Number, we 10. Did. Number 10, monetization. You can make money from your podcast once you have at least three to 5,000 daily downloads. We use C-Suite Network. They are our official podcast host now. 
They manage selling ads, collecting money. They do it all. They have all that covered for us, and they came to us. For the sake of selling our own podcast, we use SMS uh, calls to action. Our own, sorry, our own products. We, yep. we use our own calls to action. Be careful that you do this correctly or you could get financially hurt. What do you mean by that? All right. So, for example, here's one. Have you guys completed your 2022 business plan yet? If you have not, we have got your uh, solution to your problem because your problem is you do not have a business plan and you do need a business plan. We want to give you a free copy and this we have sold this for years and years, upwards to $300 with training on how to complete it. It's called the Real Estate Treasure Map. We want to give it to you for free. And all you've got to do to get a free copy of the Real Estate Treasure Map is just text the word, let me make sure I get this right, text the word Harris, H-A-R-R-I-S to 47372. Text the word Harris to 47372. When you do, we'll text you back a link. You then will have to say, yes, you want to get the free book, and then you'll be given a link to download it. So just go ahead and text the word Harris to 47372, and you'll be given a free copy of our real estate treasure map. So that, that, that was an SMS call to action. Right. We're telling you what how to text something to what number. Um, we Julie and I had to get approved to have our own short code. So the short code is a 47372, and we, you have to get approved by the FTC, and it's not cheap to do it. So you might want to have a call to action, for example. You can just have, and you guys hear me do this for eXp Realty. Here it is. Ready? If you're interested in joining eXp Realty and you're looking for a sponsor who will certainly be proactive and you're successful uh, at eXp Realty, uh, we would appreciate the opportunity to be your sponsor. We are formally applying for the job of being your sponsor. Just text me and Julie directly, or Julie and I directly, 512-758-0206, 512-758-0206. Now, if you're just getting started at, in, on your journey to join eXp Realty and you're looking for more information, just text the letters EXP to 47372. Text the letters EXP to 47372. You guys get it? So when you're starting, what you might want to do is give your cell phone number out and you can just have them text the word, for example, maybe you want to offer a good old-fashioned CMA. Maybe you want to offer a, whatever you're going to offer. And, and again, if you're going to make this more community-focused, your podcast, maybe you want to offer the latest school lunch thing. I mean, right before this podcast, Julie was on our daughter's elementary school's uh, website, you know, checking on her homework and checking on her grades and everything. Mm -hmm. So who knows what kind of content you can come up with. Like one of the things that Julie and I did every year and when we were selling real estate is we would offer people a free report on how to get their property taxes lowered. And That's which a is, popular one which you should definitely consider doing. Mm -hmm. Or you could do a, a list of the buyers that you have looking in the area, and we'd call that one Sellers Wanted. You could do all kinds of things. Rem just think of it like this. If you're stymied about what you should be offering, what would you want if you weren't in real estate? What information would you value? You definitely value a current CMA, wouldn't you? You definitely value uh, help on how to get your property taxes lowered. So if you're going to do a podcast, give them the phone number, give them your actual cell phone number, Tell them to text you directly and just simply put in the subject line uh, because if you say if they if they're thinking they have to talk to you, some of them will call you, answer the phone, but others of them will text you and just tell them to put in the subject line CMA or tell them to put in the sac uh, subject line taxes, whatever it is, and then you know what to send back to them. And you know they've given you permission to text. They've started out in that conversation with you. Now where well, you got to be careful is spam texting. Spam texting will get you in trouble nine times out of 10. You have to have permission to uh, text somebody. And I'm going to give you this example again because I want you to really see how it works. Text the word Harris to 47372. The first thing you're going to get back from us is you giving us permission to text you what you originally asked for. That's called double opt-in SMS. It's pretty much military grade, state of the art way of making so that we can, uh, with, we can do permission based SMSing. SMSing, by the way, for those of you who are interested in marketing, is the most effective way to communicate with people digitally. There is no second place. It used to be email, but now nothing is as powerful as SMSing, and nothing is easy as to screw up uh, legally with SMSing if you don't do it permission based. That's, I think, a good pop, uh, good point. Uh, time to go to point number 11. 11. Yes, how to launch your podcast. Well, you need to have 10 to 12 shows ready to launch. Decide how frequently you're going to publish. We publish every day, as you guys know. Real Estate Coaching Radio has over 2,000 shows. So that's 2,000 plus shows. That acts as an archive for search. We talked about that before. Uh, related to being successful as an agent. But when, I mean, that can sound intimidating, have 10 to 12 shows ready to launch. 
But remember, they don't have to be that long. They could be 15 minutes to 30 minutes if you want to start out that way. Well, start out, to Julie's point, yeah. start out by doing a month's worth. Start out by doing a show a week. Start out by doing four shows and having all the shows. If you guys want to take the easy route, just do interview shows and interview local yes. people, like we said. Um, it's a good or, way to get started. Or you could just come up with con. You just look, listen to other podcasts. If you've never listened to podcasts before, your homework from this and yesterday's show is going to be go to iTunes, start putting in keywords of things you're interested in, and then start listening to a podcast. You'd be shocked how terrible some of the podcasts are. They get lots of downloads. This is true. And some of them, <laughs> some of them I listen to, but the content's good. I'll listen right. to podcasts where it you you know it, everything about it is unlistenable, but whoever it is that's delivering the content is phenomenal. <laughs> You, know? That's, uh, you just gave me a flashback to when we used to listen to like the Howard Brenton cassette tapes, which were primitive podcasts. It was Marshall Redder that you were thinking of. Yes, absolutely. You read my mind. Yep. And the, the, the quality, you know, it was coughing and there was static, but the content was good and That's we great. looked forward to it. Well, so. but why'd that work? Because there were usually three or four people mm -hmm. on the tape. Some of you guys don't know what that is. Google and, it. And, and the tape, <laughs> and, and, but it was like you were part of the conversation. Yes. The quality was terrible. Very familiar, though. The content was usually great, but it was because you were partaking in a conversation. That's yes. what it felt like. And it was quality content that we could use as agents. So. Yep. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about the big picture. That's point number 12. Podcasting is the new frontier for content creators. It is easier to create an audience with podcasting versus YouTube. YouTube is oversaturated. If you don't know which to do, do both. You can make money from a podcast. We talked about Joe Rogan a lot. He's being paid $100 million from Spotify, for example. Real Estate Coaching Radio has sponsors that range from Every Plate to BetterHelp and CoreLogic. Your sponsors don't have to be all in what you would call your space, right? But they should appeal to your listeners, right? So CoreLogic is obviously in real estate space. But BetterHelp and Every Plate is something that really appeals to everybody. So that's the big picture on the uh, advertising stuff. I'm trying to think of this. Oh, so what does it mean by oversaturated? Yeah. So it's harder to get people to watch your videos on YouTube because there's so many people creating videos on YouTube than it is to get people to listen to your podcast if you've chosen a drilled down niche topic with regards to podcasting. How do you know? Now, here's an interesting question. How do you know which topic or where to focus your energies when creating your podcast? This is counterintuitive. But you want to go to see where there's other podcasts that are viable. Go to you or um, iTunes, and, and you're thinking about doing a podcast, let's say on uh, you know real estate or some topic you're interested in. French bulldogs, Julie's topic, right? You know, we we we've long been doing French bulldog rescue. We participate in French bulldog all kinds of charities and all the rest of it. So if Julie wanted to start a podcast on French Bulldogs, she'd go to iTunes, she'd look to see how many podcasts are on iTunes about uh, French Bulldogs, and she'd go and see where they ranked probably just to get a general sense of how many listeners they have. And if she saw there were 10 podcasts that get no listens that are barely ranked, chances are that is a really bad topic. But if she saw those podcasts all had, you know, three, five, 10,000 regular downloads and they're just getting a lot of audience, listen to those podcasts, get a sense of what people want to listen to and copy it. Right. Or maybe a twist to French Bulldogs, how to right. make my French Bulldog stop farting. That's probably more, <laughs> that's probably going to have more lessons than just something general. Okay. That's a great topic. <laughs> it is. Everybody. You know, actually, that. Julie, we didn't, this wasn't a point we should add this. Um, What's that? But when you're titling your podcast, that is really important. You got to create a title this is copywriting 101 that's going to grab people's attention. If your title is too long or too droll, people are not going to find it that interesting. One of the easiest ways to learn how to copyright is read what other people are sending you in the email that you actually are, atten are paying attention to. If you open something, chances are that was a great subject line. Um, you can go to, um, who was it? Um, uh, MailChimp. MailChimp does some of the best research ever on subject lines. When Julie and I are looking for inspiration, when we're wanting to write a new campaign or helping our marketing team with a new campaign, um, and they're hitting brick walls about different you know, phrasing and whatnot, I go to Google, I go to MailChimp, I then will search for the titles, uh, the subject lines of their email campaigns that uh, their customers have sent that got the best results. And then I'll then translate that to a podcast title. In other words, you're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Hell no. And I'm not really trying to be an expert at it either. I'm just copying. Yes. But you, but like how to this, uh, to seven steps for this. I mean, Julie and I step are- Step-by-step guide. Exactly. That's what people love. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not hard, guys. Just go and see what other people are doing when you're looking for inspiration and copy. All great artists copy. There's, there's no such thing as an original idea. It's, a, it's a, a, essentially an um, evolution 
of billions of previous ideas. Mm -hmm. And if you give yourself permission to copy, like when, you know, it's Julia's a classical musician, 99% of what her education was, was copying what somebody else was doing. Copying and polishing, copying and polishing. Exactly. And that's all it is. Same thing with authors. You know, you see a lot of similar titles and similar themes. It's because that's what people want. Yep. Okay. So point number 13, your bonus. And I think this is one of the most interesting points. What is a successful podcast? How many downloads or listens should I be getting? Let's define what success looks like. So in a world of YouTube views and Twitter followers, we become accustomed to figures in the hundreds of thousands and even millions. So it's important to realize that these numbers are completely irrelevant to podcasting. The time and effort it takes for somebody to click follow on Twitter or watch a few seconds of YouTube video should never be compared. It is not a comp for podcast listening. Podcasting po listeners are about long-term relationship building. Podcast listening is a commitment and an investment. So never compare your average podcast downloads to somebody else's Instagram followers. They are not comparable. Consider this. A good selling book sells 250 copies per year. That's it. With lifetime sales of only 3,000 total sales ever. 81% of adults between 18 and 29 years old had read a book in any format in the previous year. It has been stated that over 90% of all books that people buy are actually never read. And that better not be true about Harris Rules, so get to reading, <laughs> listeners. Uh, point being, if your show is 30 minutes long and you have even 50 people downloading four times per month for 12 months, your content is getting more attention than most authors will get in a lifetime. So you, you might be surprised by these benchmarks, right? So let's say you, you've got a new episode out there, and in the next seven days of its release, you get, let's say, 26 or more downloads. Just 26. You're already in the top 50% of podcasts. More than 72 puts you in the top 25%. I think that's that right. right. Okay. Yep. More than 231, you're in the top 10%. More than 539, you're in the top 5%. And more than 3,062 downloads, you're in the top 1% of podcasts. It's not 3 billion. It's 3,000. And okay? this podcast is usually in the top 0.5% or the top 0.5%. Uh, one per basically we some of this some days we'll have fifty thousand people download this podcast and really what contributes to that truthfully I got no clue I mean our normally consistency is part of it right well, but, but, but our, we, we didn't hit those numbers on our first podcast oh, hell it no. builds it up years. you get better how you go about all of this improves and that's one of the reasons you want to be more consistent but our normal podcast we'll put out like this podcast we'll get twenty five thousand twenty four thousand mm -hmm. twenty seven thousand downloads right and it'll get it within the first week. Um, but what happens sometimes is we'll have these spikes where it's like 50,000, 55,000. And I honestly don't know why. Right. And I'll ask our different syndicators. I'll look for, I'll go to just different, you know, the topic KPIs. I think it's the topic, but I honestly don't know. I have no clue. Sometimes yeah. it's because somebody talked about the podcast on a website. Uh, Inman did a story on the podcast. Oh, you know what we need to also put on here? You d deleted our stats when you started yesterday. But also we need to put something on there because, um, what was it, Motley Fool said our yes. podcast was one of the most important real estate podcasts. Mm -hmm. Inman's given us a lot of recognition for our spike. podcast. Right. So I think what happens is sometimes your podcast starts to get listens and then it starts to get uh, essentially um, organic, organic growth is a big part of it. Our podcast – has shared a lot amongst agents. And that's, you know, a lot of brokers and offices and team leaders. And, you know, they've been using this podcast for years as educational backbones for all their agents, especially when Julie and I are doing our normal content where we're drilling down on how to pre-qualify or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So remember, done is better than perfect. Get started today on your podcast. It will evolve and it will improve with time as long as you're consistent and paying attention to the outcome. Always keep your listener in mind. Remember, Bob, he's got to be getting value from your message. That's right. That's there it is, guys. So now the question is, how long are you going to take to think about this and get ready to get started and procrastinate? <laughs> how long have you guys been waiting around to actually, you know, look for the inspiration? Um, <laughs> or have you been spending all the time trying to avoid the perspiration of actually starting a podcast? Yeah. Now is a great time to start a podcast, especially this time of year. Choose, look, we want you to you know, make money from your podcast. We want you to sell houses from your podcast. We want you to have a benefit from doing it. But if you don't want to, if you just want to do it because you enjoy doing it and you want to, for example, um, some people we know have used their podcast to model out a book. So they'll try out different topics and themes and content. A lot of the, um, the true crime podcasts, mm -hmm. a lot of true crime podcasts, which true crime is consistently one of the top 
uh, genres and podcasting that people that. listen to. Isn't that, Isn't that insane? Yeah. It is. But these, they're, some of them are based on, we've listened to some of them. Sure. And some of them are fiction. Mm -hmm. But what people will do is they'll, uh, and you hear about this all the time. Matter of fact, there's been movies that have been made mm -hmm. that started with do people doing podcasts. Mm -hmm. The podcast became a screenplay or a book because yep. they were able to you know, put all their thoughts together. Mm -hmm. And then it became a movie or an HBO series or a Netflix sure. series or all kinds of different things. So if you've ever had something boil around, boiling around in your head, for example, if you always wanted to write a book on whatever, like Julie wants to write uh, children's books, the best way to do that would be to start a podcast about children's books. That could be a chapter in your book. Exactly. And start working on your concepts. And then what you'll find over time is the stories will get better. It's easier for every single human to talk than it is to write. That's for sure. When you write, you slow down, you overanalyze, you think, you've got Grammarly on all your devices like we do. It's constantly barking at you about how <laughs> dumb you are about spelling and grammar. Uh, maybe that's just for me. I don't know. Uh, but but it, it does help you work out your thoughts and organize your content. I have to say, when we were working on the Harris Rules book, mm -hmm. having the podcast was very helpful because... Uh, we use podcast outlines. Exactly. Well, like a 30-minute podcast translates to at least a part of a chapter most of the time. Mm -hmm. And so having to present that helped us organize our thoughts and bullet point things and see what they're interested in. Um, so I think that's really important. It, it will help you with everything else you do in your business. And think about it this way, too. Again, all of you need to expand your center of influence in your town where you sell real estate. So that's a great way. Maybe you start out by interviewing influential people in your town, as, especially if you can relate it back to real estate. That's a start. Interviews are easier than writing fresh content. A builder that just maybe, maybe has some spec homes that maybe you want to try to list. That's a good yeah, idea. There you go. Give them some attention, right? So, yes, I hope that over our past two podcasts about, you know, not just starting, but also potentially monetizing your podcast and demystifying it, convincing you that you don't have to spend a ton of money or a bunch of engineering on it. Hopefully we've demystified it to the point where we've removed all of your objections and you can actually pull the trigger and get started. Well, and so on behalf of Julie and I, thank you for keeping this the number one listened to daily podcast for real estate agents um, in the, well, I was about to say the world, it very probably is the number one in the world, but I know it is in the United States. Uh, you know, having been downloaded about 20 million times is inc incredible. But if you did the math on that, guys, if you do the math backwards, how many years, how many shows, you'll realize that our daily podcasts are, you know, right under the numbers that I told you. Sometimes if we do a podcast, we used to do them on Sunday. The Sunday podcast might get four or 5,000 downloads. Those are our most fun podcasts because we're not talking <laughs> about real estate. At least for us. <laughs> yeah. You know, we definitely have started to attract some real interesting types that were interested in some of the goofy ass things you and I were talking about. Indeed. We did that. Through that's the that 7%. That's we, other. That's right. We did that during the pandemic to keep everybody entertained on the weekends. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're kind of defragging some of the silliness that we found during the week. But that's another good topic for podcasting. You guys could set up Google Alerts, set up Google Alerts around some keywords of things you're interested in. And then all of a sudden your podcasting content starts creating itself based on whatever is in the news from Google Alerts about, say, your town real estate or whatever your topic is. I'll give you one that I just popped to mind. Um, I can't remember his last name, but Sean is his first name. And he, he his content is about Laguna Beach, right? And he's not, I don't think he's doing a podcast yet on it, but I thought it was really interesting and that it could be a great podcast uh, platform is to take like little known facts about your town. Mm, that's a great because idea. Because his, he was doing an email newsletter for a while and I've read every single one of them because I, you know, we're Laguna enthusiasts and I, I, there were so many little hidden things like it could be, you know, a haunted story where in October, right? It could be. You know, there were famous people that lived there. What about this historic house? I think that's something that if you're enthusiastic about the town you live in, you're going to seek that out. That's that a fantastic a idea. Platform, and if right? you were to take that from an email and make mm -hmm. that into a podcast, yes. that's incredible. Yeah. And so how do you get that information? Join your historical society, mm -hmm. which expands your center of influence. Maybe an architectural, you know, uh, review or something like that. Follow what's going on in your town. And know those facts. Be the go-to source. Be the person that absolutely knows about where you sell. You could have one overarching theme, your town real estate, right? Mm -hmm. And then you could have several sub-themes that will help mm -hmm. you organize your thoughts. Julie mentioned one about uh, ghost stories. I remember where we used to live in uh, Austin, Texas, and we used to live in a town called Georgetown. There was someone that wrote a book about how haunted and jo downtown yeah. Georgetown was haunted as hell too. Let me tell you, <laughs> lots of stories, lots of stories. But that would have been Very a great podcast. Yeah, absolutely. maybe year round. I think so. I, I feel a theme coming on. But, uh, but, you know, you sell real estate in your town. You're supposed to be somebody that's a specialist in all things housing. 
I think that would be really fascinating to do. And it would expand what you know about making you more of a go-to resource. I mean, think about like if I had a historical house to sell and I've been listening to your podcast about all you know about the architecture of my town, you might be a logical choice to list my historical house with. That's right. And so don't overanalyze, guys. Just get the first one in the can. Just start. Yes. Don't overthink John it. Is better than don't, perfect. Don't, right. Don't listen to it back and drive yourself crazy. I've listened to a total of zero. Have you ever listened to one of our podcasts? I listen to the interview ones that I'm not on that you're interviewing okay. somebody about. But, I've but never. Gen- but not off ours, no. I've never, because yeah. I'm too self-critical. Yeah, I'll never I, listen I to it. To, no. Yeah, I listen to this podcast, I'll drive myself crazy. Exactly. I'm not going to listen to any of them. Yeah. Because I'll say, why didn't we say this? Well, we should have said it this way. Right. And you know, my mind done is better crazy. than perfect. Exactly. Because I'm too much of a perfectionist. Well, and, and we do use an outline, so we try to keep ourselves on track as much as possible. You should at least have some bullet points that you're going over. And if you're interviewing somebody, I think you typically will send some questions ahead of time. When you're on somebody else's podcast, they'll send you some questions. So you you don't want to go there and just wing it, right? You do want to have some kind of a structure in place, but also allow yourself to go off topic a little bit as it gets interesting. Well, along those lines, mm-hmm. when uh, there are interviews, I will send them questions ahead of time because I want them to know I'm not just going to let them stay on their talking points. Right. Because that's just going to be boring because most of the people that I'll interview have been interviewed before because they're usually famous or sure. famous in our world in real estate, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but then if like they, if we if I ask the first question and they go on some tangent that's interesting, right. I know if it's interesting to me, it's going to be interesting to the listeners mm-hmm. too. And so we'll just drill down on that. Well, I remember uh, being in the room when you were starting to interview Michael Valdez, mm-hmm. the XP, and one of the first things you said to him is, I plan on asking you questions that not everybody has already asked you. Right. And I think that was really good. And he appreciated that because, you know, if you get interviewed a lot, you probably get bored with it a little bit. Uh, but also, you were thinking, like, from an agent standpoint, what does an agent want to hear that's not just some kind of uh, corporate standard go-to bullet point, which would be boring, right? It's, some people, though, it's like when you and I were interviewing all the Bravo guys, right? Mm-hmm. Frederick Eklund, all these other guys. Sure. So some people, what you'll have when you're doing interviews, they're so um, – they won't go off their topics, they absolutely positively will not vamp. It's like set in stone for them. Set in stone. And the reason is, and he's a bad example because I think he's very dynamic, but some of these people that were, are, have positioned themselves to be experts aren't experts at all. And they don't want to be exposed for basically being, you know, fake. Not right. Frederick. Frederick's phenomenal. I shouldn't have used him as an example with following up with that thought. But so we've had people on our podcast, and this is the reason we're apprehensive to put um, people on. That after maybe like five minutes, we quickly are figuring out this person is just talking off their talking points. Like you run out of content kind of. Right. I remember we had some guy on. <laughs> uh, he, uh, I remember the aftermath. his name. No, I won't. But I remember the aftermath of this. He was a guy that was selling one of – he was one of the uh, executives and one of the uh, creators of one of the biggest CRMs for agents. Mm-hmm. And we had him on and he wanted to be on the podcast – he sent me the questions ahead of time. These are the questions I want you to ask, mm-hmm. which I hate. Right. You tell me what questions I'm going to ask. I guarantee you they aren't <laughs> nice going to get asked. Yeah, because yeah, you're trying to control the conversation. It's a sure. shitty result for the people who are listening. Mm-hmm. So I, um, we, you know, I asked him his first two or three questions, and then he got a little bit more comfortable. And then I got off topic. Mm-hmm. And then I started asking him what I already knew the answers to, but I wanted to see what he would say. Mm-hmm. I started asking him questions about the, uh, the efficiency of long-term lead follow-up. Mm-hmm with regards yeah. to a CRM. And to my uh, shock, mm-hmm. he told the truth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so but here was, that was a risk you took asking but, that, to well, see. The yeah. aftermath is what got interesting. So mm-hmm. he then and I started, he had done, his company had done internal studies on how inefficient, an incredible waste of time, long-term lead, lead follow-up is in terms of emails and digital follow-up basically. It, you know, in essence, the most CRMs are, are sold with the idea that you can plug in a long-term lead follow-up and somehow magically your silent salesperson of emails that go out are going to magically make that person want to do business with you. It's total BS. It's been BS forever, but it's especially BS now that people are so inundated with different things that are re- mm-hmm. they're receiving constantly. Um, I knew it. I, I didn't know if he knew it or if he did know it, whether he was going to admit it. Julie and I, uh, you know, we talk with, uh, we've, Inman's done stories on this. Other non-real estate marketing companies have done stories on this. Books have been written on this. This is not new information. But the fact is, if you're selling a CRM and you can't tell people that it's going to basically help them get uh, business from long-term drip campaigns, in other words, if that's no longer one of the unique selling propositions you have of your CRM, no one's going to buy it. And they know it, and he knew it, but he told the truth. And it was amazing. Interesting. Afterwards, he was 
uh, it wasn't even the it wasn't even the day after. It was like the second after. Mm-hmm. His uh, people have been listening live that must have worked at his company, mm-hmm. and he panicked yeah. because what he would because he would told the truth about essentially the you know the efficiency of these products, and he, he basically begged for us to took it to yeah. take it down, mm-hmm. and I didn't. I left it up for a while because he signed a release, and this is information that well, needs to be put out. And because we. Try to deliver what we promised to our podcast listeners. But after about a month, I did take it down. Yeah. I take it down because people stopped listening to it. It did what it was intended to do. Sure. So these are some of the things you can get into with interviewees that are sometimes unintended consequences, and usually they end up in good things. But, you know, I that's why I think you probably don't want to do 100% interviews. Do maybe every other one or every We tried it. When we one. started, when we sure. started like in 2012, I think is when we started our mm-hmm. podcast, 2011. Yeah. Um, we tried to do an interview base, and it was horrible mm-hmm. because it's not like you and I have great energy and enthusiasm, I think, and it mm-hmm. translates over the podcast. I hope so. But hardly anybody does. Yes. Some people are just, you know, I think when I'm doing this with coaching clients where they're they're struggling with like, how do I get more uh, conversation out of somebody? And I say, you know, there are just people in the world that are not great when they're put on the spot or they're not great on an interview or they're not great on the phone, Right. Like, I think about my dad. He's not great on the phone. He's super smart, you know, love him. It's all great, but he's not really a great phone guy. Probably not a great interview person. And there's a lot of people out there that have super fantastic content in their head, but they're they're just maybe not going to be a great interview. But that does go to something. So if you are choosing guests, choose somebody that has great energy and enthusiasm. And maybe listen to their past interviews so that you know and you save yourself the trouble. Energy and enthusiasm. Uh, someone could say something with energy and enthusiasm, which was like a bunch of words just strung together that make no sense. <laughs> yeah. But if they say it with energy and enthusiasm. Conviction. Conviction. <laughs> you're actually going to you're gonna clap your hands. I mean, think about most major politicians. A lot of what comes out of their My mouth goodness. is total garbage. Doesn't yeah. even make sense. If you wrote the words down down yourself what that person just said that people were applauding for, you wouldn't know what the hell that w- those words meant. That's but, really interesting to watch some of them that are like really great on a teleprompter, but if they're off script, it's just a total dumpster fire. <laughs> and other ones that have had a lot of uh, natural energy and enthusiasm that don't like to be on the teleprompter. I think it's really interesting to watch uh, stuff like that. I like watching actor interviews because you can see like uh, sometimes how you think they're going to be is not how they really are. The whole interviewing thing is a science in, in itself, I think. It's all about questions. It's all about making yeah. people comfortable. Joe Rogan makes them inebriated. That gets in there, too. <laughs> you but, probably can serve. I was going to say faster, but maybe not. With but but you just got to be super careful about having it be based on interviews. It's the easy button to start. Um, it's easy to get people to want to be on a podcast. It makes them feel good. They get to talk about themselves. But just it's never – your podcast is kind of a harder time really creating its own soul – because it's always going to be about you asking questions of the other person. And I promise you, 75% of the people you're going to interview, you're not going to control their environment, especially if it's done over Zoom. They might not have a professional mic. But really, they're not going to have energy and enthusiasm 90% of the time. They're going to just, you know, that. So you're, you're, enter- you're, you're bringing in something. You're essentially building your mansion on ground you don't own in, this, in just a sort of different way because you're basing the success of your podcast on how well that guest actually can right. present. So I like the idea of making your town the star. Yeah, totally. Or making real estate the star, like our uh, client in, in Austin, you know, moving to Austin. Well, there, you can – that's a great theme. Moving has to do with real estate, buying and selling. But there's a lot of different directions that she can take it, right? She can talk about new construction this week. She can talk about a shopping district next week. She can invite them to something that she's sponsoring the following week. But it's all about moving to Austin. So I think, you know, maybe that's a place to start is to make your town or make real estate the star. That way you're not dependent on, you know, maybe your interviewees or even yourself on some degree. We could talk about this forever. We really we could. we do it every day. We do it. But this, this is something you and I really love <laughs> doing. I mean, I don't like using the word uh, passion when it relates to business, but the truth is I think podcast is definitely something you and I have passion for. Definitely. And I, you know, the other thing I think maybe an unintended consequence of podcasting every day for us at least is it also forces you to be more tuned in and not uh, have a tendency to kind of like hole up in your home office because you, you have to know about some like current issues that are going on in real estate in your life, in your town. You ha- you're, you're talking to your listeners, so you have to be, uh, I guess, more engaged on some level. 
You well, know? It's it, it forces you into knowing more things. <laughs> since Julie's, I since I was about to round the bend, I'm off but, script now, but since, so. since Julie brought that up, <laughs> so podcasting has uh, is becoming something culturally, societally that gives you the same level of credibility as having been a published author, right? So there's different versions of published authors. There's somebody that basically makes some sort of white paper or ebook and they they give it away. They, it, well, they give it away on their website. It's not even ever in print. Then there's people that self-publish their books and they put them on Amazon. And you can do that. Get a, an, a, what is it, an ISBN number. Mm-hmm. You can actually self-publish your own book. There's different people you can hire to help you write your own book. Our first version of Harris Rules was self-published. Actually, it wasn't self-published, now I remember. But it was published by somebody who essentially should have just been a self-publisher. They were terrible. Uh, but then, then we uh, sold the rights to our book to a real publisher, and then now our book is for sale. Barnes & Noble and all over the places. Totally different. But that's the same evolutionary path that you guys can follow with, with your podcast because you don't know where the podcast is going to take you. You don't know who's going to listen to your podcast. Like, let's say, for example, you're doing your podcast and you're all, oh, I only have, you know, 25 downloads. Well, we gave you the statistics. 26 downloads basically in the first seven days makes you better than 50% of all the podcasts on there. But what if one of the people listening to your podcast happens to be the biggest builder in the country Mm. who is interested in New Albany, Ohio real estate, found your podcast, listening to your podcast, and now you somehow have an inroad to list be the primary listing agent for the thousand homes he's about to build. You just don't know. You don't know. And, but you do know that if you don't start, that you're not going to have that possibility of ever reaching that person. Our podcast has gotten to the point where people are, in some circles, are offended if we haven't invited them to be a, um, a guest or be interviewed on our podcast. And I had to keep that in mind sometimes because mm-hmm. like, we've had some people that we've had on our podcast in the past 12 months that when um, I actually started doing the interview, they confided in me that they didn't understand, like they'll say in their own ways that, well, why wasn't I on earlier? And, you know, it's, so it's kind of an interesting thing that being on this podcast, and this was not by design, has become almost sort of like, um, I don't even know what, a status symbol in some circles? Know, but it has become that, I think is your yeah. point, is that the way you start it isn't going to be the way it ends up even, you know, two months from now if you're being consistent. And you've got to allow for that growth and study, you know, what are people liking? They're going to tell you. And then maybe six months from now, it's got a little bit different theme to it. Yeah. And that's okay. You've got to allow yourself to do that. Let it evolve. Hopefully, we've given you guys, as promised, education, motivation. Now it's up to you to get into action. The notes from this podcast and all podcasts are always available on timandjulieharris.com. Do us a favor. Because it does make some difference. <laughs> Give us a five-star review on iTunes and do put in some nice words, especially if you have nice words to say. And if you don't, well, then guess what? Don't do not don't, don't do anything, right? <laughs> um, but our notes are available on timandjulieharris.com. You can download um, our notes. To, uh, we don't edit them. You guys get what we typed, though I will be editing some of these things because I wrote down three things that we forgot mm-hmm. to put in. Uh, but other than that, you're getting the raw form content that we produce. Thank you, for guys, for continuing to listen to us every day. You've become part of our lives. We've become part of your life. Um, and please do start a podcast. And if you want Julie or I to be a guest on your podcast, once you get it rolled out, hell yeah, we'll be your podcast guest. We'll help you get it started, um, probably. <laughs> After we Google you. After we Google you, right. Make sure you're not, you know, selling screen doors and alien away spray or something. <laughs> exactly. We did have, that was worth mentioning. We did have somebody that wanted to be a podcast guest and they had a great bio real estate wise. And of course we Googled them and this was years ago. Mm-hmm. And we found out that they were a huge, and trust me, we have no, we're not judging here, but they were a huge alien, like, uh, you know, from outer space, uh, not just like a fan but they were like an enthusiast and they sold red worms. Yes. Red quite, worms. Quite an interesting resume. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, you nah. can't make this stuff up. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> you guys have a fantastic day. I'll talk to you on the show tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com. <laughs>